hola hola so this is a day in the life um this is going to be a little bit different of a video for me something that a lot of you guys have asked for for me to just kind of go through a typical day so um this is it so i set orders up by date um right now all this stuff up here is from the website from 423 into i think i've got like may and mid-may up there and then all this stuff over here um this thick ass book <laughs> is um stuff that needs to be done for custom work and then over here i've got some stuff set up that's this is the stuff that you guys mail in that's not website type stuff um, that's also done by date so everything is done by date in the order in which it's paid for so right now i've got one that's a big order that's this and this back here i've got one two three four orders set up to spray and then once these are clear coated they'll go over here these are drying right now that's a 10 piece set that's going to get foiled and then painted over in a darter pattern so this is it i'm just going to kind of take you through what i'm doing and we'll go as long as we can go and or until i run out of battery one or the other um my batteries are getting old in this GoPro. I do have music going on, so I don't know if they're going to demonetize this or not. But if they don't, then that's awesome. I'm going to try and talk through as much of it as I can. Um, I did get one complaint like three or four years ago on the website um, that uh, they, they didn't appreciate the music, um, that, that it was kind of rude. But you know what? This is how I work, folks. This is I have to have music in my soul to get me through the day. Um, a lot of you know that I used to, well, I, I'm still a musician, but I used to tour and stuff. So, music just awesome. It's how we are, it's a coping mechanism for a lot of us. And I think it's pretty important to keep us all positive. But you're t this is the iTunes collection. Uh, I don't subscribe to services anymore. I used to do like Apple iTunes and Spotify and all that stuff. Amazon Prime comes with music, but I never use it. This is just, I've had my iTunes running since, shoot, 2003, whenever they came out with iPods. And this is, um, if I let my iTunes just run out without shuffling, it would probably last for about two weeks, 24 hours a day. I've probably got like 20,000 songs. And yeah, it's not bootleg. It's either my own personal CD collection that I've burned onto various laptops and uploaded, or it's uh, stuff that I've purchased through Apple. So who knows what's going to be playing, it's whatever it is, it's on um, just a song shuffle. But this is, um, this is going to be uh, Winter Gill, and then I've got a bunch of them over there as well. I've got three lip that are set up. It's not really, meh, let's just go with it. <laughs> this is the everything in a day spray session. So while I'm letting the white dry, just kind of air dry, I'm going to go ahead and do the crawl patterns on these guys. This is three from Milt, and he wants the spring molt crawl, which is this one, the Ozark goblin crawl, which is going to be this one, and this will be a scarab back here. So yeah, let's let's do that for you guys. These are going to be three craw-ish patterns that he's requested. We'll start out with this spring molt crawl. I'm not going to do as much teaching since I'm just kind of going through at regular speed how I'd go through a day. I'm just going to be running my patterns. I got a couple of questions from you guys 
about why I don't do live Facebook. And I have before. I've actually taught on live Facebook before. Um, I just kind of like the YouTube format. Plus, this is how I make a living. It's all I do. Um, and I do have a monetized channel now so that it kind of helps me support getting supplies and stuff. But there's a lot of really good talent on Facebook Live. So pay attention to those folks. Don't quit watching them. I actually like watching Krista and Pete, Dominic, like all those folks. I think Samson Lures goes live on Facebook as well. But this, I've been, I've had a YouTube channel since 2012, um, before it was like cool to have a YouTube channel. And I've just kind of kept it up and really gone hard and strong with it the last few years. Plus it gives you like feature length and you know, if God forbid you do something that Facebook doesn't like, then they just yank your video and you can't, it, like it's gone. So. I never really appreciated that a whole lot. I thought that was kind of crappy. And it's, the other thing that has really been getting on my nerves lately, folks, is like they provide music. So I can do a story on Facebook and it um, they give you songs. Like they give you all these songs and I'm sure that they're there's some I'm sure there's some sort of arrangement where they get paid Facebook is not going to do anything that doesn't benefit Facebook and and that's you know, that's the way it is with most big companies you know they, they're trying to get paid too but it irritates me that you can do whatever Facebook provides for you in a story but then you can't like you can't do a live video like Pete does live videos all the time and he's constantly getting yanked for for music, and it's just stupid. I'm sorry, but that's just dumb. Um, and I'm not I'm not going to be on like this negative high horse today. I just I have um, I have reservations about doing stuff on Facebook because there's absolutely no benefit other than PR and getting getting your stuff out there and noticed. Um, but there's very little benefit to the artist um, and it's a shame because I think for all of the talent that's on Facebook I, I just think that Facebook needs to give back a little bit more and YouTube does that like YouTube does um, incentives and stuff for the for the community for the creative community on on the um, spring mold crawl let me make sure you guys are still in frame I'm like my video um, monitor on, on my chest he goes dark after a few minutes so I have to keep clicking it and pushing it to make sure you guys are still in frame I don't want you like looking at down here <laughs> that would kind of suck right um, yeah so this is um, that was my little Facebook rant I just Facebook needs to really step up their game and do more for their for their creators and their artists and the people that help sustain their marketplace basically you know you sell anything on marketplace and Facebook wants to know did you sell it here and da 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 da, da. And I'm sure that at some point they're gonna ask for a fee just like Etsy does and everybody else so I don't know I, I just think that there's other markets that are light years beyond where Facebook is for their community and I wish that they would wish that they would change that. So I'm just doing a little pattern over top of this. And it kind of looks like that the craw arms, if you guys can see that. This is the spring molt, which is really cool. I'm gonna do some other detailing in this as well. But yeah, I, I love watching everybody on Facebook Live. I just it's unfortunate that they don't do more for their community and they don't give their artists and their their video people a chance to to probably because you know we're all small businesses everybody's trying to make a living doing what we're doing and you know in other formats as well I see people doing 
you know, really cool makeup jobs and stuff on there. And I just think Facebook could be a whole lot more than it is. And uh, I, I think it's also a little bit biased at times because it seems like if we're gonna live and die by the First Amendment then that needs to apply to everybody and I do mean that sincerely it can't just apply to one side and not the other um, and that's not meant to be in a conservative or a liberal or a middle-of-the-road standpoint I just think that freedom of speech is freedom of speech now that said I don't think that all of the crap that's not true needs to be but how you know how do you I don't know how do you siphon through all that? Probably the conversation will go off the rails if I kept going on that. So let's get back to business here. On the spring malt craw, I do a little bit of stenciling. This is the Art Tools Mini FX. And that was the Black Crows we were just listening to. But uh, this kind of gives a depth perception of the molting craw of the the cross segment's kind of sloughing off. This is, I think, traditional jazz. A little, little Louisiana, a little Nolens sound coming out of my iTunes. And this is a detail black magenta that I'm putting into this. I'll keep make, making sure that you guys are in frame. I've got you on on the GoPro today on a medium range deal. And let's see what are we going to do here. I think we'll do a couple of different. So this is this, this is my go-to and I keep it in a there's a lure magazine that comes out of Japan that I can't understand because my Japanese sucks. I'm learning, I'm trying to learn, but it still really sucks. But I love looking at all of the JDM stuff. So I keep my go-to stencils, stuff that I use over and over and over again in there. It seems to work out for me. This gives the appearance of crawl arms. I'm gonna flip that over and do the same pattern on the other side. Let's see here. How did I do that? Wait a minute. So that was this. Oh, so we just flip it like, like this. There we go. So how's everybody doing out there in YouTube land today? Hopefully you guys are doing well. The other side was a little bit more detailed just because I flipped my hand over. A little steadier on one side than I am the other. This still turned out pretty well. Looks like a little 3D craw arm stencil. <clears throat> I think this one's dried enough. I, I try and use up all the colors that I've got at the time. This is going to be one of, again one of those winter green patterns eventually. And I'm just kind of bringing this down. If I have a color that I know I'm going to use on another one as I'm going through my day. Um, I try and make sure that other lure is close by. I've had tons and tons of coffee today, folks. So if I seem a little amped up, I shouldn't be. I just, I cut the grass today and did the weed eating and, and that's a, it's a whole nother beast animal unto itself. Hi, Casey. What you doing, honey? Everybody, this is Casey. If you don't know Casey, she is 16 years young this year. She's a magical dog to me. She's from Freeport, Texas. She was a rescue after Hurricane Rita and um, is my heart and soul. My best friend in the whole wide world is a dog. And I know some of you guys understand that. She's, um, she's an awesome lab. There we go, well, Chris Cornell. We got jam, folks, we got a jam. Come on now, sing it. Woo! Down in alcohol. Woo, yeah. Changing colors, I did a little clean up job here. Sunshine, sun is mine. All right, 
right, I turned it back down. I know, it's, it's hard because, you know, when I'm not filming, I'm rocking in here. This is like the coolest, I mean, look around. I've worked my whole life to have a studio that's this cool. You know, I've, I've put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this. And so when you guys are not with me, I'm jamming. Most days. So this is a trick that a lot of you guys are using just to give a little bit more texture and detail to a, a pattern. This is the Creature Feature by Anarchy. And it is, I'm gonna clean my, see I gotta bring my pressure back down. So my pressure, folks, is right around, I'd say it's right around 10 right now. You don't want to overkill this. You don't want to do too much. But um, just enough to subtly change this bait and kind of trick it out a little bit is what I like to do with it. And I do notice that a lot of you guys are using We got these back in February. What is it, June now? Uh, January. They were released, I think, in February. Some of us got them ahead of time. Thank you, Brian at Anarchy. Always give a shout out. And uh, these, the guys that are doing this also have to make a living, just like uh, Russ over at Insane. I use a lot of his stuff as well. And um, I mean, it's just, it's awesome that they, they give some of us, you know, it kind of showcases what they, what they do and what their tools are. And all of them make really awesome stencils. So thank you, Brian. Thank you, Russ. This is the creature feature. I think it's the 44, 45. It's a tiny one. So there's a few of these. See, now I'm teaching. I'm gonna be slower. That's all right. You guys don't mind, right? So there's three different sizes that he gave me and they all come in handy. And you can see I've, I've used them all pretty heavy. And then these are really good crappie patterns. I use them for crappie. This is really good for a brook trout or a brown trout design. Um, and then the two that I use all the time for crappie. You can see because it's like mostly black. So yep. Now, as we move on to this, I've got pretty much everything that I, that I want to get done on this except for, I like these eyes. We'll give us a quick heat set. And I still have plenty of white right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little Q-tip. And then just put this in. I miss performing, I miss being on stage. I have not done a tour or a show in probably six or seven years. And I was just talking with, um, I was talking with one of my guitar players, Bill Cuff. Yeah, reminiscing, talking about those glory days, folks. And um, he's having surgery on his wrist, which really sucks as a guitar player. Luckily, it's on his right hand. And he makes chords. He's a lead guitarist, obviously. So he, um, Frank Sinatra. Um, so luckily, it's not the hand that does all the intricate stuff. It's the strumming hand and picking hand. So. This is not a song I want to hear right now. So we have gotten pretty much towards the end of this one. These are three vintage mag warts, magnum warts, and I've taped off the uh, Led Zeppelin is much better than Frank. Right? I love Frank Sinatra, don't get me wrong, but eek, just was not in the mood for, I need to jam when I'm working in here. Frank just isn't a jam kind of guy. He's a Friday night, date night kind of guy. And if you feel that you can't go on. But yeah, I miss, I miss the bands. I miss touring. Well, he said on this. Try and remember to keep you guys in frame since we're doing a day in the life. Um, I'm hopeful that I'll be able to maybe angle that down just a little bit. We'll help you guys. Um, we're just gonna keep rocking and rolling. So that is this one. We're gonna put this in the back off to the side. We're gonna bring up this one. This is gonna get 
a little bit of white around. That's okay, don't worry about a little splatter. This, uh, Createx, you either love it or hate it, and lately on this batch I've been hating it. It's been a super pain in the butt. It's chunky. You don't want your paint chunky, folks. This is the new Iwata. It's, it's uh, <laughs> second verse, same as the first. It's the same one. It's the Eclipse HPCS. But um, I'm trying to make sure I take as good a care of it as I can. I try not to junk it up. So I'm still doing all the stuff that I used to do. Cleaning it out between colors most of the time. But don't worry about the splatter on this. It's, uh, it's going to get covered up here shortly. Just kind of do that as a background for depth. Um, and it does help. Now this is a normal. This is actually, I'm trying to find, this is the one that I want. It's got a little bit more jagged edge, rough edge to it. Um, I still add the collar on it the same way. There we go. Get a little pure black. This is the Wicked Jet Black that I'm loading up here. Get that gunk out of there. So we're just going to roll with it. Thanks for hanging out with me today in YouTube land. Rascal's going to bark and I'm going to let him. I'm not going to stop the camera. I think the neighbor has the audacity to be cutting their grass right now, which drives Rascal crazy. He doesn't like it when I do it either. He's, um, he's a rescue out of Baltimore when I lived in uh, Prince George's County, when I lived in Brentwood, Maryland. Rascal the Yorkie Poo came from less than great conditions. I have no idea how badly he was abused when he was a puppy. But I got him a little damaged and he gets he gets into fits sometimes he's a good boy he just um he's scared of a lot of stuff and he gets angry all the time kind of like a lot of us are lately i guess um but he he can't help what happens to him he can now because he's got a good home and he's a good boy but he barks a lot he definitely barks a lot. So on this one, I pulled this rough edge out. And one of the things that I kind of want to do on this is give a different kind of a texture to the edges of these uh, segments. So like on this one, we're going to add it. And then we're going to add a few more because it's just Sometimes you want a little bit different of a pattern. Sometimes it just gets monotonous doing the same old thing over and over again. Casey, what's he barking at? Do you really know? Does he know what he's barking at? No? Okay. And we're going to go backwards this time on this one. We're going to cover it from the reverse, which I do on some of my um, Imperial Cross patterns. But it just uh, provides a little bit different of a pattern, which I like from time to time. I, I like switching it up. kind of overlaps from the opposite side. Always, I'm getting ready to replace that. There we go. Just come around from the opposite side. And this is my Ozark Goblin. Pretty cool. Let's flip it around. So I don't know if you guys are going to like this format or not. I just thought I'd switch it up um, after a while watching the same kind of 
stuff might get a little boring for you. So if you guys like the format that you're seeing today, or if you want to see my smiling face in some of this, and, and that's not because I don't like to film myself. I, I don't care. I don't care if you guys see me or not, but I've always felt on stuff like this that the bait in front of me is the most important thing that you guys are going to see. So I've always tried to keep it about the actual teaching and instruction. Um, it's just I learn better that way, but if you guys if you guys want something a little bit different from time to time, let me know. Leave me a comment. Leave me a comment. I'll be happy to consider anything that's reasonable, I would say. I want to get right behind here. And then one more. And then for this one, I think I just want something a little bit different. I want to go back to this creature feature deal here and do something a little larger. Do on both sides here. And remember, we've got this peel off here that's going to reveal that this is a pre wrap magnum wart. So I'm not, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to paint any detail over that because that's just going to get pulled off like a band aid. So we have finished on that side. We're going back over to this. And now on this one, since I still have black loaded in the chamber, instead of we're doing the reverse of what we did on this, this one has got the black sockets and a white drop. This one has got a white background. And then for this, instead of using, make sure I've got, I can get small enough here. Yep. All we're going to do is just come down, hold my hand steady, fill that in. Same thing with the other side. All this is, folks, is trigger control. That's it. That's all we're doing. Now, I think on my original, just from recollection, ah, go. Just kind of get up in the cracks a little bit. There we go. Now we can set this back and work on the scarab. Now the scarab is not a traditional crawl pattern. Um, it's actually one of the Art Deco series that I did years ago and a lot of folks still like the pattern so it's still fairly popular. Um, these need a black. See, I always, I'm always thinking about what I need to do because this is going to get meshed, these two. And then uh, this will be a mesh. So we'll just burn this up. I need a little bit more. I was hoping I could get both of them done. That is not going to happen. But that's basically the method to the madness. If I have one color in and I know I've got a pattern set up, even if it's a different order, uh, if I'm going to be using that color, I try and run through that color as best I can. Ah! I'm not putting much in here. I'm just hoping I can stretch it out. Just a couple of drops. But this is going to be a, a black, mac, uh, black mesh wrap. Come on. Finish up, it. Good deal. All right. We're rolling. All right. Now, on this next one, I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. Acting like it's a Friday. So, on this one, this is a scarab beetle. It's been a pattern of mine for a few years, but I, this, I'll let this dry overnight. There, 
Where's Rascal? Hello, boy. What you doing? Are you making a lot of noise for the people? Hmm? Are you barking and stuff? What are you doing? What are you doing? Hi. Come on, guys. You get my spray. Don't get in my spray now. Good boy. So I'm just coming back. This, uh, let's dry it overnight with the base. I just wanted to kind of top this off just a little bit with some fluorescent yellow. It needs to be really bright on top. It's almost a reverse of what normal people do. Usually the, the bright chartreuse or fluorescent is on the bottom and the darker colors are on the top. Not on this one. This is a red trigger. A lot of you guys ask, and, and it's sort of, I guess, a common fact. Red does disappear, and uh, these magwarts will troll a little bit deeper, dive down a little bit deeper. But red is still effective as a profile color because it's still a dark enough color to be a profile color once the actual color of itself disappears to the fish underwater. So, put up shallow as you're maneuvering it. That red still is key. And if you have a small mouth or even a large mouth or spot that's post spawn or spawn on the bed as you're popping that back through their area, that red can be super key. That's my boy. Yeah, buddy, get it. I know, we all have to do that every once in a while, right, buddy? I get it. All right, eh, maybe a little bit more. <laughs> so yeah, this is a... Uh, this is the full, the full Monty here. This is all the stuff that you normally don't see that we get edited out. I'm not going to do... I dare you. Make another stain on this carpet for me. There you go. Boy. <laughs> Life and times of Jekyll Bates. Yeehaw. So on this one, I do use a couple of stencils. It's a little bit thicker there. And I use this one. So it's gonna have some plum and some iridescent blue, electric blue, if you will. You all right, buddy? You having some issues? Just a little bit of plum. This is Leo Kotke, if you can hear that in the background. Turn that down. Poor Rascal is having himself a time today. We all get like that. We just don't show it to everybody. And to his credit, he would not be on camera if it were not for me. But scooting his way across my garage. But hey, it happens right here every day. Why not view it with me? Share my joy. Fun pattern. Fun, fun, fun. I like working colors that play well off of one another and this yellow and purple works really well and then there's going to be blue down here on the red and they're fairly opposite on the color spectrum. In case anybody was wondering. I 
on this one, I don't want to smear it. So we're going to low kill. Kind of get that tack. And if you're worried about stuff like that, if you can do this, if you can use the, like on this I'm using the line tie just to keep it in there. But sometimes if you pull it off and it's wet, uh, it just smears and it looks like crap and you don't want that, so. All right, go for this bottom side. Give our winter gill just a little bit of shine here. This is a pearlized plum. So certainly not gonna, I'm just gonna do a little overspray. Kind of build the layers up on this as we go along. This is what I would be doing if you guys weren't with me, so. Setting all this stuff off to the side because I'm gonna do a little paint splattering here on the blue. There's two ways we can approach this. We've got this really cool metallic blue with the spectra, spectra text, which I like a lot. But on the other hand, I could also just flick a little iridescent. And then we're also going to outline this red and blue. Almost give it a Superman effect. That would kind of be cool, I think. Kind of be cool. Let's see. That's mostly clean. Hey, one thing, um, as I go through this session with you guys, when you do this right here, if you back flush it, don't pull your trigger back because that allows the stuff to go into this part of your airbrush. If you just push, look, check it out. Turn your pressure up. If you just push it down, air is gonna flow. And if you do that, you still get all that back flushed out. So you don't need to, and then you can just blow it out. All right. Let's see. Looking for, and I'm probably not going to find it because I never find what I want. Not a Rolling Stone song, you can't always get what you want. So I think one of the things I'm going to do here, just to be on the safe side, is cover this area right there. Push these to the back. And add another little dude over here. And that's just going to keep keep everything out of harm's way if I get crazy flicking. I always keep these little medicine cups close. For those of you just joining the program, this is the Scarab. And it's the third one that we've done today. And I'm just kind of taking you through a day in the life. This is, uh, if you guys were not with me, I'd probably still be going a little bit quicker than this because I am stopping to teach a little bit. I'm not going to do that as much on this video. And then when it's time for me to start prepping dinner, which is not long from now, we're just going to turn the cameras off and I'll see what we've got. And hopefully we've got at least three baits finished for you guys. Perhaps one more. One thing I always try to do is get all this junk because this is... This right here is where all the clogs come from in your airbrush, this junk that adds up right around the opening. So I'm gonna mix this just to give it a little bit more shimmer. You can see the difference. I think you guys can see the difference in that. One is super, super metallic and that is metallic blue. Imagine that. Mix this together here. All right, I'm going to flick the excess off as best I can because there's a lot of it. And then we're just going to kind of go crazy, which is what this pattern requires. 
And then I'm going to take what is left over in this and put it in the airbrush and do a little accenting. Do a little ac sorry, brush was in my mouth. Do a little accenting on the uh, on the bill here on the lip. I'm going to overlap this just a bit. go you would be surprised at the fish this pattern has caught more zeppelin always try and get all the slop up so I'm not putting my hands and other baits and anything else that might be in the way just clean that looks good yeah I'll take you guys along why not actually these dogs are probably hungry I might even show you that too always keep your brushes clean stands without reason common sense So this is, uh, this is the paint job that has been done in the living room. It's completely, it was brown before. It was brown and the ceiling got a refresh. The walls are kind of like a yellowish mint, like a yellowish green, which is cool. And uh, yep, that's what it looks like. Cabinets got cleaned. Everything got cleaned. There's the yellow pup. Say hi. What? They get excited at dinner time. All right. I get, we got it. We got it. Who's hungry? You hungry? Are you hungry? You're always hungry. Alright. Casey. <laughs> Molly. Molly's perfect at dinner time and breakfast. Good girl, Molly. And a little weenie. Come here, little weenie. You eat he has to eat separate because he attacks the girls and wants to eat their food and they're much bigger than him and uh, he loses so we just try and keep the little guy safe good boy rascal all right so I'm also going to place a little bit of white here but this is going to have red eyes when we're done make sure I'm getting a good yep good spray in here We're going to heat set that real quick and waste not want not turn the pressure back up and get a extra little something something try and make sure all that stuff is used up we try not to waste anything because uh, conservation goes a long way in today's economy unfortunately that's not that I ever wasted before but with all the crazy stuff that's been going on this year, it, uh, it helps to save every little tiny bit that I can. All right. Let's get that heat set. The water tells you not to leave solution overnight in the airbrush. Um, I ignore that. I leave just a little bit of cleaner which helps me in the, in the next morning. Oh. 
Although I will notice um, my old Iwata HPC, HPCS, uh, this looks like it's brass on the inside. The other one did not. The other one might have had like a stronger Teflon finish. I'm fairly sure it's Teflon, what they put on the inside of that. Just to, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, please feel free to correct me in the comments. I do not mind being corrected as long as it's an accurate correction. You guys aren't just saying stuff. I'm, I mean, whatever. I encourage comments. Always have, always will. Okay, so now we are going to do, okay, either sunset red, fluorescent red, or straight up red red. Thinking fluorescent red. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. You guys are thinking loud. I can hear it. Fluorescent red would look pretty, pretty wicked on this. I know. One of Jen's crazy patterns. I don't care. It's a, it's a bass catcher. My customers like it. Don't sell as many of them as my craws, but I sell several a year. So this is how we're going to put this on. We're just going to dot this. Try and roll that through as best I can. Might need a little bit heavier of a coat or a second dip here. I think I'm going to let this sit. And then maybe put on a, a second application there. So we can take that off. I always find that if I just roll one way through, that it kind of helps keep the shape of the end of the Q-tip. Makes it a little bit easier. Give it one more good dot here. Get it on a little bit heavier. All right. Scarab. Spring mold. Ozark Goblin. I hope you guys have had fun with me today. I have had fun for the last hour or so hanging out with you guys. It is a different format. Not quite as much instruction, but it's sort of more of a picture of the day in the life. Um, I could hang out here with you for like three more hours. We could finish this run and start another one, which is what I'm getting ready to do after I make some dinner. But until then, hang out, paint a lot of cool stuff, paint something cool with me, Cheers, happy casting, and keep on painting from Jekyll Bates. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Are you my good boy? Who loves you, buddy? See y'all later.
again It's not too often that something like this shows up on the steps of my life This thing is headed for somewhere Oh man, I just wanna be in no Baby